it is so important to get a well-rounded education for leadership and just for life in general. And it's so important to understand and understand deeply and fully that you have to take responsibility yourself. You know, it's just like in the stock market or anything else. It, you know, the saying's always there uh, in the stock market that no one is more concerned about you making money than you yourself are and making sure, no, especially th of losing money. No one is more concerned to keep you from losing money than you will be yourself. You have to take a certain amount through the advice. You don't take the advice of brokers and take the advice of everything you can read and understand. But then in the final analysis, you have to take the personal responsibility for your own investments. And it's the same thing in education. We should view education as a tool in our toolbox of life. But not as an instrument to teach us how to think or to form our, our brain for us or to make us something, or to provide a career that will pay us a good living, you know, that needs to be a consideration, but that's not the major point of education. And so I'm going to try to consider all these points and all these things that you need to do to get a well-rounded edu well education, because it's starting to appear like we've really started to get a dearth of well-educated people, especially in leadership. It almost seems like that people that are uneducated and can't find another anything else to do go into politics. You know, like the, the old saying, uh, you know, if you if if you can do it, if you can't be can't teach. And if you can't do either one, go into politics. And it seems like it's like that. And so, you know, the last few presidents we've had over the past 20 or 30 years just seems like uh, there's just a real lack there. I mean, you can just detect that there's not a well-rounded education, not even good communication skills. You know, like now Bill Clinton had was probably the last one that really had good communication skills. There's certain areas in which he may have been lacking, but not near so much as some of the others. He did at least have a good education, a uh, fairly well-rounded education. And, uh, of course, he went to Harvard, uh, not, to, and not to Harvard, and not to our own Ivy League school, but he went to Oxford, <laughs> of all things. You know, and so maybe that's something that we ought to be thinking about why was it that Oxford was the one that Bill Clinton went to and he was the last one that could communicate well and so we need to think of him when it comes to President Reagan he was a good communicator but that didn't really mean that he had necessarily had a well-rounded education but he was able to communicate what he did know well, and, and we saw how important that was, that you're able to communicate what you do know. If you can't communicate it, you know, then you're not going to be able to lead out it, and you're not going to be able to help other people to understand it. And so that is the second principle, is to learn good communication skills. First of all, get a well-rounded education. Second, get good communication skills, and I'm talking about for leadership especially if you're, you know, prepared to be the president of the United States or a senator or a congressman or a governor or a local leader, uh, to get a well-rounded edu education first, then to get good communication skills and get them early in life. You know, get practice speaking in all ways that you can in any public forum you can as early as you can in life. That's very, very important. And then uh, number three is to develop a good reading speed and comprehension. You know, whatever you have to do by reading a whole lot, that'll help. But also by going to reading labs and using the, the, uh, the various materials. There's even those reading labs available on the Internet and uh, uh, machines and all that are available that 
that caused it, that let the, you know, words get faster and faster and train you how to read faster and faster and not just read one word at a time, but start reading a whole sentence and then a whole paragraph and then a whole page at a time. You learn how to do all that, how to get through, I mean, just how to really get through the book and know how to find the substance in it and quickly. And uh, so reading, reading speed and reading, reading comprehension, but number, number four would be take some classes and if they're, they're not available they should be if they're not try to find some books on it on, on uh, how to do good library research and, ha and how to know what to, how to find what you need rapidly and how to find the best material you know and don't just depend upon the on, we don't you need to stop depending just upon the computer and the internet. You can learn a vast amount of information <clears throat> on the internet, and I utilize it all the time, you know. But you also need to know how to digest a book. <clears throat> you know how you need to know how to take that book apart, digest it, and find the material that is the most important and find it in the most rapid way possible. And a lot of this stuff, I'm going to try my best to explain it, but some of it, you just learn while you're doing it, and it takes practice. But I'm still going to try my best to explain it to you. And uh, But one of the things that will help you to catch on is to just spend some time, you know, try to go into as large a library as you can find, one that has a million or more volumes if possible, but even a small one. You know, but go into one and don't just start looking stuff up, but just spend some time going up and down the aisles of the library and just kind of saying, Lord, tell me which book you want me to read. You know, kind of like that or, or, or my uh, intuitional mind or my divine mind or whatever, however you want to look at that, what, you know, look within yourself and just ask, what is it that maybe... Just hopefully my eyes will light on the right thing. And just try to look up and down and just view every, take in everything that is there. And then something catches your eye, take it and read, and go through it and find out what's there. And then go on down and just keep doing that. And give your chance, your yourself a chance to expand your mind through, uh, you know, just general exploration, you know. Uh, the art of browsing, the art of uh, exploration of books. You know, the sense of adventure. You need to gain a sense of adventure about books. And, uh, you know, you can gain a sense of adventure about going on the Internet, but you're going to find a lot of stuff that's just nonsense. You're going to find a lot of material, <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff on the Internet. And that won't be quite as true in the library, even though you can find a lot of dead wood in there sometimes. But uh, utilizing all of that will give you uh, a great tool in beginning to develop the ability to become self-educated. And you need that ability. You need the ability to become self-educated after you, you know, even while during, but also especially after you get your degree your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, your PhD, whichever, however far you go, when you decide to stop the formal education, then your self-education has to be able to take over and go from there, and you have to have the ability to continue to self-educate yourself. And you view the education system as a tool to prepare you in that. But it's not the only tool. You have to develop your intuition. You have to develop your sixth sense. You have to develop, you know, uh, a sixth sense power, sort of, and an intuitional power to know what is the best and the most efficient books and materials for you to spend your time on. Otherwise, you waste a lot of time because there's so many, so much material and so many books uh, out there. But really, you'll be really surprised to find out after you spend a lot of years doing it uh, that a lot of it is really 
not there's just a whole lot of it that's really the one for one thing a lot of it just duplicates itself anyway and once you get the heart of it all then uh, the rest of it is, is duplication anyway but then there's just a lot of it that is just not worth even spending time on but you have to know that you can't just assume you don't want to just walk into a library or a research lab or a computer room or anything, a computer room or anything else, assuming that you already know, you know, what is the most valuable and you're just going to go get that and you're not even going to, you know, just put blinders on your eyes to everything else. That's not a ba that's not a good technique. And so I'm going to continue teaching this le these lessons on this to prepare people for uh, leadership and for to give them the life skills that they need in case they do decide to run for uh, political office or for, you know, positions of leadership and so forth, positions where communication is required and so forth. Okay, I'm going to leave you with that for now and then take off on it again in another video later. And so we'll say goodbye for now uh, and uh, I'll talk to you on the next video. Thank you for listening to this. And we'll get all of it in here eventually. And I'll keep staying with you. And if you have questions, write them in the down below. And I'll address those in future videos. Thank you very much.